I'd like to just very briefly tell the story. She's born Joyce Green, a little Jewish girl uh, in Coney Island. Her father was a vaudeville tap dancer, but he gave it up to play uh, cards in the back alleys. And they had no money, and so she would often go off under the boardwalk where a wonderful family of uh, black homeless people adopted her and told, sh taught her all kinds of things, like how to eat, like getting uh, the hot dogs that had been thrown away in Nathan's, etc. Um, she uh, grew up and she married um, a wonderful Sicilian man, Sal Di Fiore, and they had three beautiful children. And she was the saint of the Brooklyn neighborhood, and she, she cooked for everybody. She would cook to 40, 50 people at the time, and then if there was any food left over, she would scrape it with a big loaf of Italian bread and, you know, eat. And she got to be very fat. She got to be, well, she was about 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and she got to be 300 pounds, and she tried all kinds of ways to try to diet, and it wasn't working. So she went to Jack Lalena. I'm going to sound exactly the way she sounded. She said, listen. I need something you can teach me that, you know, really, you know, something that will help me lose weight. And he said, oh, well, the yoga breath. Yoga breath, what's that? And so she learned the yoga breath. <laughs> and um, so she would be <laughs> downstairs, and Sal wanted none of it. He was watching television in, in bed. And she got into the lotus posture, and she couldn't get out of it. <laughs> but she did, so she said, well, I'll do the yoga breath. She closed her eyes. She did her version of the yoga breath. And she heard somebody going back and forth, dragging something, and she thought it was the dog. Scotty, get out of here. I'm going to kill you. Stop that. I got I to gotta do the yoga breath. <gasps> drag, 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 drag. Scotty, I swear to God, I'm going to twist your tail. <laughs> Scotty! And she opens her eyes. <laughs> there she says, it's Jesus Christ with a silly grin on his face, dragging his cross back and forth. <laughs> and she said, get out! Out of here. I'm Jewish. You don't want me. You want my husband, Sal, upstairs. He's Catholic. Now, just go away. <laughs> drag, 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 drag. Listen, you're scaring me. I know you're my hallucination. And you won't. I got to get out of here. But she can't get out of this yoga. But, you know, this <laughs> so in, in this, with her, you know, her legs akimbo, she goes bump, 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 bump upstairs. And she goes to see her husband, Sal. Jesus Christ is downstairs, and he's looking for you, not me, because I'm Jewish. And he says, oh, babe, I'll clean up what he actually said. Oh, babe, I told you not to mess with that effing yoga. Now we got to call in Father Papa Duzzi to do an exorcism. <laughs> what do you mean exorcism? The man himself is downstairs. <laughs> well, Sal would have none of it, so she went to doing her yoga exercise, breathing exercises in the bathtub. and. Jesus came around and gave her some lessons, and then he brought his friend. She says, suddenly, this very huge man in a diaper shows up, named Karoli Baba, you know. And uh, so he teaches me, and then somebody else comes, and they bring. And I got to, you know, I had a very good education, a theological education in the bathtub, because they all came along. <laughs> anyway, so she goes, and she studies with Hilda Charles, an English mystic, and who finally says, you know, my dear, I rather suspect you're an avatar of the mother. What do you mean, mother? I'm, uh, I'm Joyce De Fiori from Brooklyn. Yeah, I'm not going to send you to India. Well, of course, in India, everybody loses a great deal of weight for one reason or another. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets to slim down. She looks really good. But people stop starting, you know, would stop, start and start falling on his Ma, Ma, don't call me Ma. I'm Joyce De Fiori. Anyway, she goes back, and um, well, I will not tell the bad part of <laughs> you know that term. Like and <laughs> no, no, it's really bad. I can't talk. But, but it, and it makes a very good. Reb Schleimer used to say, "I don't want to talk about bad things." No, no, it's just somebody betrayed her very badly, so badly that her husband beat her up, and so she had to leave. And she taught for a while, and then she in New York, and then she went down to um, uh, Sebastian, Florida. And she knew the mafia, so she terrified them. They were scared to death of her, and they gave her 85 acres. <laughs> and she built this extraordinary ashram, the Kashi Ashram. And she invited wonderful religious, you know, evocateurs, you were one of them, to build their shrines, their shrines. And he built 
a synagogue there, and the Sufis built something. And, but she was devoted to Mother Kali. She was very much a Jindu, <laughs> Hindu, you know, and uh, very deeply, came very deeply learned in, in Hindu philosophy. But she also had a deep appreciation and relevance, relevance and reverence for all these others. So she learned their forms as well. She became a great poet because she tapped into the creative core that is going on beneath the surface crust of consciousness all the time. She became a poet, she became an artist, and she took care of people with AIDS, AIDS babies, AIDS um, people of, of all kinds of things. She would, she would dress in, r in, in, in red leather and go into the ghettos where kids were uh, on drugs and she'd pull them out and she would get them through the, she was an extraordinary woman uh, with a real sense of the world's religions. Never stop talking like that, except when she did Darshan, and then suddenly she had an English accent. It was very interesting. <laughs> but, but the glory of her was that she had a profound sense of the inter, I would say interdimensional, intertwining of spiritual practice and spiritual ways of being. She walked her talk, she did these kinds of things you spoke of. She was a woman of immense generosity, kindness, practical action in the world, and um, was one of the glories of our time. So to me, she was this revelation of who we are, where we're going, what we yet may be, as we honor and even borrow, you know, beautifully from each other's spiritual practice, because all these practices and understandings come from hundreds and thousands of years of wisdom seekers. So yes, but th then to integrate it within your own faith and to deepen your faith, while you also have the ancillary practices from others, this to me is the renaissance of spirituality on this earth at this time. Thank you.